I know I hate Berlin, but those jerseys are just pure fire. Maximilian says, I don't understand this franchise mode. Someone explain it. Okay, so basically we removed all 31 NHL teams and replaced them with custom teams like random team names like the Vermont Devils or the Montana Moon Men. Doesn't really make any sense. I don't even know if anyone from Montana has ever been to the moon, but I thought it kind of sounded cool. We got teams basically from everywhere from Helsinki all the way to Red Deer. We basically created 35 custom players, put them in the franchise mode, gave them a high franchise potential, and now here we are. Does that help? What is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of your custom NHL 20 Shanghai Dragons franchise mode. Here we are, start of year number three. Now we're three years in, let's do a bit of a recap. So three years into the franchise mode, we have 164 games played, 111 wins, only 42 losses, and 11 overtime and shootout losses for a total of 233 points. Not bad for our first couple years in the X-Tech Hockey League. We're obviously keeping track with our rivalry up against the Tokyo Ice Tigers. We have played eight games. We are 6-2, and two, outscoring them 31-25, to 25, currently on a four-game winning streak against against said Tokyo Ice Tigers. And just for fun, we're keeping track against the Berlin Puck Wizards, and it's not going that great. We have been basically dominated by the Berlin Puck Wizards. 14 games played, we've only won two of them. We're two, nine, and three, and there's a goal differential of minus 30. They've scored almost 60 goals, and we have scored almost 30, 29 to 59, and we are on a five game losing streak. This is bad. I really want to make sure we turn this around. Tokyo, it's a nice rivalry, but that damn Bo Alfredson, I tell you, he gets under my skin, and he's getting the better of us because we are 2-9-3. Hashtag not good. Here's a quick look at our draft history. Obviously, year number one, we ended up picking the now assistant captain, Clarence Vernasty. Picked him sixth overall, and he's on our first line, killing it right now. We also got Esteban Estrada, another low elite player. We got Brant Clark, who a lot of you guys told me to get, and I'm glad you did, because he turned out to be medium elite. And obviously, here is our playoff history. We went all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals last year, and we ended up losing to the Mississauga Elephants and they went on to lose in the Stanley Cup final actually so back-to-back -back years back-to-back -back playoff performances both 50 win years back-to-back -back. but a lot of you guys were telling me that this Brant Clark kid is supposed to be a top prospect in a couple years so I've been sleeping on him usually I'm pretty good with up-and-coming prospects but for some reason I've never heard of this Brant Clark kid but you guys are saying he's the next best thing and he actually has a decent amount of trade value as well so that's good news for us He's a nice medium elite player, only 55 overall, but I've seen medium elites at a low overall grow extremely fast. I wouldn't be shocked if he's like 73 overall by the end of this year. They can grow ridiculously quick. I've kind of done exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to load up on defensive prospects, and I think we did just that. Brant Clark, who, if everything goes as planned, he could be a top two D-man for us sooner than later. He's got four points in four games with the Barry Colts in the Ontario Hockey League. Uh, we also got a guy like uh, Kim Erickson, who we just drafted, and he's turned out to be quite the beast. 68 overall, medium top four. He's playing down there in our American Hockey League system. Him, so hopefully he's going to come up uh, sooner than later as well. We got Estrada, who ended up getting one or two games of postseason, one game actually, and actually got a assist in his NHL postseason debut. We got Del Mastro, who we just drafted. We got some young pieces. I'm excited for this team in the future. But we have a big thing to talk about, and that is the coach. A lot of you guys were saying that whole coaching thing is a glitch. I don't know about that. I, I think it's because I had the auto staff management on so it just didn't renew his contract again I don't know what really went down but regardless we lost out on Ryland Meyer our head coach and now we have this guy and it's not really that great Georgie all right I'm not a big fan 58 overall team fit he doesn't like Vernasty he doesn't like JFK doesn't like Carl Alsner that man's never done anything wrong in his life how can you hate on the guy so we got some comments to go over let's check them out 
Richard Clay says a lot of the times when hiring a new head coach, I would look at the NHL assistants because they're a lot cheaper and you can find a guy slash girl. It's 2020. Anything can happen. Uh, you can find a guy slash girl that has good team chemistry and works well with your top players. That said, I would definitely hire Spike. He's a good fit with Costin and Vernasty. Not great with Pox, but I think he will give you the best line chemistry with Pox, Costin, and Vernasty. I want to make that my first line really, really badly. After looking back, Blum would be my second choice with a nice 69 overall team fit just doesn't mesh well with JFK so let's have a look at these two guys in question here I hope they're both still available uh, there we go Blum and Spike Bickle all right he's listed as an associate coach not the worst thing in the world to bring him in as a head coach it's gonna be definitely a bit of a learning curve here but we got some more comments here this guy in the comments says please take Spike Bickle he has an a-plus teaching which is essentially what matters so okay it's actually a minus, not a plus, but it's interesting that will help players grow. It goes on to say that a teaching specialty of the generalist will help develop and grow all players on your team, which I really like. It doesn't specifically just focus on forwards or defensemen or goalies. It kind of focuses on everyone and a minus for teaching. It's not that bad. Now, Spike Bickle has a 67% team fit. He's pretty high on everyone except for Corey Conacher, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, Vernasty is not super high. But if you have a look at Eric Blum, he's actually listed for 69% team fit. Nice. He's a huge fan of Julius Honka, massive fan of JSD. Um, as for Vernasty, he's pretty high up there. However, Felix Pox and Lindstrom, not super worried about Lindstrom, but Felix Pox is really, really low. Now, Eric Blum, he's got B- minus for teaching. Is two overall better really going to affect that much on the team fit? I really want Felix Pox to mesh well with the coach. That's why I'm thinking more towards Spike Bickle. Now, starting off 1-3 and three is never a great thing, obviously, so I'm not going to fire my coach right away. However, if we continue to shit the bed, we might be firing our head coach and we might be going after Spike Bickle. Because our head coach right now, his teaching specialty is a C. That's not great. And this guy's very focused on forwards. I kind of want everyone to get a little bit of love, all right? I don't just want just the forwards. I mean, he's huge on Felix Pox, but really low on everyone everyone else. I mean, I kind of already know what I'm going to do. Why am I delaying it? We're going to go ahead and fire our head coach right here, right now. I'm sorry, Georgie. It just didn't work out. Fire head coach. I got different plans. See you later. So right away, we have to promote someone to an interim head coach, and then I'm going to go ahead and offer Spike. Spike, my man. How's it going, Spike? Going to go and give him the big title, the big cheese, NHL head coach. Coach Spike Bickle. We're taking a chance here. All right, I'll give him whatever he wants. He's got to accept it. I think he wanted like 700k or something. How about 1.3 million? There you go. Thanks for the offer. Yeah, you know what? No worries, bud. All right, so we fired our head coach. Now with the interim head coach, how does this make our lines look? Um, interesting. Okay, so it gets rid of a lot in here. A lot of these were like plus one. And what I did off camera is since I really want Vernasty, Costin and Felix Pox to be our first line. I went ahead and I changed Klim Costin to a playmaker. So I hope that a playmaker two-way forward sniper is going to be a good combination. Or I could change him back to a power forward and then change Vernasty to a playmaker. Because Vernasty might be more of a playmaker. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So we'll wait to see how our new head coach is going to fit with everything. Because obviously the chemistry is going to change depending on what head coach you have but starting off the year one and three is not great can we get a win against Vermont the head coach is gone and we got ourselves an overtime winner Felix Pox has a big night and Spike Bickle I am happy to join the team I want to thank you for reaching out with an offer I look forward to making an impact Spike welcome to the squad with a head coach named Spike oh man anything is possible all right Spike Bickle time to get to work chief and our assistant coach can say he went 1-0 as an NHL head coach. So, hey, there you go. 
Now let's have a look at, oh, there you go. Look at all the green, baby. You love to see it. So what if I was to make Klim Costin back to a power forward and move Vernasty to a playmaker? So go playmaker, power forward, sniper. I think that might be ideal to maybe get a little bit better chemistry. Everything's a plus one, which I like. Now what can I do to make it a little bit better? Honka and Fitzgerald, that's totally fine. Lidstrom McEwen, I don't think it'll get any better maybe a random plus five here or there I don't really think so I don't think I can make it any better than what it is I think I'm gonna change some things up here what if I Ooh. so if I put Korshkov on the first line it gives it a plus three now what's Korshkov he is a power forward okay so maybe we're missing a power forward maybe that's it if I make Klim Kostin the power forward and then move Vernaski to the playmaker maybe that's all it needs Look at Clarence, what a handsome fella. I really don't like messing with the player player types. I kind of wish I could just keep it as it is, but if it is going to improve the uh, chemistry, why not give it a chance? Let's see. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Michael Scott once said that. All right, is changing it to a playmaker power forward combo going to help it out? Oh, baby, gives it a plus three. Okay, we might be onto something here. This is exactly what I want. I want Felix Pox, Klim Kostin, and Vernasty on our first line, and it does give it a plus three. So it looks like it's working out. I'm happy with that. I'm super happy with that, actually. I think our lines are good to go. Our defense is good to go. We're basically good to go. Uh, let's put all these guys down in the AHL, strengthen up the American Hockey League team and then let's get some simulation done baby so actually all three of these players have potential to be claimed on waivers let's see if any of them do none of them got claimed all right here we go our first game with our new head coach and our new plus three first line things you love to see up against the defending Stanley Cup champions and Boris Yakupov the six foot eight mutant from OKC period number one and it's two to one okay Boris Yakupov and Joel L'Esperance score for them but then Cole Lind gets a goal for your Shanghai Dragons period number two can we get back into this still two one lost Lots of hockey left here. Lots of hockey left. No, do not let them get a power play goal, especially not that Boris Yakupov character. All right, come on, there you go, baby. Klim Kostin, first liner. That's what I'm talking about. Power forward Klim Kostin. Are we gonna go into overtime here? All right, maybe we'll see a little OT action. Power play for them with a minute left, but a huge kill. If we go into a shootout, I'll jump in. I'll intervene this. A minute 50, and we are headed to penalty kicks against the defending Stanley Cup champions. Look at that mutant. Look at that unit of a human being. Boris Yakupov, the captain. He's got a gray beard and a mullet. Oh my god. All right, shootout time, and look who it is starting it off. We got Boris Yakupov, the big man. Oh my god, is he ever large. And he goes short side there on Eddie Lack. Here comes Felix Pox. Ooh, tucks it through the wickets. Have a nice five-hole goal there, Felix Pox. Uh, Hills, who the hell's this guy? Coming in. Oh my god, he goes top blocker on Eddie Lack. All right, here comes the captain, Captain Honka on Jake Ottinger. Oh, and a little post check there unfortunately captain honka couldn't get it done the con smythe winner from last year merkley eddie lack says no 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 not today kid here comes klim costin he needs to score to keep this thing going oh baby a little bait and switch action you absolutely love to see it hobbs hey where's calvin he comes through a couple of moves a nice little toe save there from edward lack who do we got oh man vernasty he can win it oh my god that was a little bit of a stiff arm there Jake Ottinger. Here comes, I think his name's Jacob Norris. Ooh, he could have went back to the forehand. He could have scored there, but decided to keep it on the backhand. J S D looking for the GWG and Jake Ottinger says, no, 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 not today. Poke check. I think this is Scott Wilson coming through. Ooh, Eddie Lack left the blocker side open, but he said, no, not today. Future Norris winner. Casey Fitzgerald just decides to run and give the goalie a hug. Not a good idea. Joel Lesperance comes through and another poke check. We got ourselves a marathon here. In comes Cole Lind. Oh man, I thought he was gonna go 
with stick side. I thought that was going to be enough to go through. I don't know who this guy is. Number 23. And he decides to give Eddie Lack a hug. And Eddie says, get the hell out of my crease. Here comes JFK starting in wide. Oh, my God. What a goal. JFK with the GWG. And we beat the defending Stanley Cup champions in a shootout. That was a nice one. The goalie really bit on the backhand here. You can see he started to slide. He brought it back real quick. Puts it top glove. And we are 1-0 and with Spike as our head coach. Nice little shootout win. You absolutely love to see it. Now we got a couple of important games up here. I see a game against Berlin. Not going to lie, I'm a little bit scared, but we are going to see if we can turn the tide here against Berlin. Another win there, and then a shootout loss. So we're 2-1 and one with our new head coach. But more importantly, we are 2-9 and nine up against Bo Alfredson and the Puck Wizards. So let's go here. Period number one, and it's one nothing. Who the hell are you? Yolvanen? Oh my god, get out of here. Period number two. Oh boy, our bad luck continues against the Puck Wizards. Looks like, depending on how this next couple minutes go, looks like they're going to go... 10 and 2 against us. This is not good. Why can't we beat Berlin? What the hell's the problem? Can we at least get one? Come on, boys. Oh my god, they shut us out. Who the hell do they have in net? Um, Caden Primo? Oh man, the Montreal Canadiens prospect gets the donut on us, shuts us out. That is a yikes. All right, so 4-4-1, four, four and one. it's not the greatest start, but we had to fire our head coach a couple games in, so the boys are the boys are starting to get used to a new system, all that stuff. I think that was two back-to-back -back losses. Sorry, one loss there. We actually won against Red Deer, but lost against Ty Ronning and the Stingray, so it's not the worst thing in the world. 6-5-1, and one. so it's basically a race the first month. It happened. We had to fire the coach. Things got a little bit messy, but Felix Pox leading the way to 12 points in 12 games, followed by Captain Honka, baby, 11 and 12. Uh, Klim Kostin and Dr. Seuss, um, okay. He's got seven points in 12 games. Vernasty's only got seven. I'd like to see his production pick up a little bit. Anyone who's really lacking here, uh, JFK, only four points. Yeah, it's not good enough. As for goalies, Eddie Lack's doing fine, 6-2-1. and one. Varlamov is 0-3, however. So let's have a look at the entire league real quick. Keith Kincaid, 9-1. and one. All right, buddy. As for rookie skaters, ooh, Koltsov. He was like 80 overall out of the draft, right? Yeah, this guy's a beast. Having himself quite a start to his rookie campaign, followed by Connor Dwyer, uh, Ladislav Plakovatskalatskafi. That's exactly how you pronounce that. And then Vashislav Kostitsin. Okay, what a name. Marcus Havled. We actually got offered this guy a few times, and he was a first round pick, so interesting. And then who's leading the league? Slava Zakhanov, over a goal per game. There you go. All right, only 14 games in here. Let's get a good chunk of simulation done before we end off this bad boy i don't want to go too crazy too fast here you know we got a new head coach we got to learn the systems let's just take it slow 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 we really don't need to go fast here Ooh, five nothing loss and a six five shootout loss okay uh, and then another loss okay come on boys turn it around here that's five l's in a row ladies and gentlemen six eight and two Things are not looking good right now. Things are not looking good. Six L's in a row. Seven L's in a row. Eight L's in a row. Nine straight losses for your Shanghai Dragons. This is bad. We are last in our division by a long shot. The Swamp Rabbits, who are supposed to be bad, have 25 points. Okay, okay, okay. Um, what? On paper, everything looks good. Uh, why is Corey Con Ooh, Corey Conacher is having an awful year. What if we did this? Reward Dr. Seuss. Maybe get that line going a little bit here. What about Korshkov? He's struggling as well. Oh, yeah, this entire line's really struggling. Let's bring Dr. Seuss up. He's been doing well. Uh, Cole Lind. Ugh, yikes. Okay, JFK really could use a little boost here. Um, defense, I mean, I don't really know what to change here. I could do this. Let's bring Dion Phaneuf down. He's only got four points, a minus seven. Lidstrom's an even rating with four points. Again, I'm not worried about the points. I'm just worried about wins. 
All right, looking to avoid our 10th straight loss. I know we've got a couple of shootout and overtime losses here, but in the Waverly Place, the Wizards of Waverly Place, the Berlin Puck Wizards are 10 two and three all time against us here let's break that trend and let's definitely break this losing streak period number one and it's two two all right vernasty and harkins baron and i'm not even going to try to pronounce that name we come out swinging though 14 to six of the shots period number two okay there you go three three future norris winner casey fitzgerald and then nathan walker fun fact he's the first australian player ever in the the NHL. Uh, now he's actually the first Australian player ever in the X-Tech Hockey League. And Captain Honka and future Norris winner. Goals from the back end. Rowan McEwen. Three goals from our defense in the third period. And finally, I mean, despite an X-Tech jinx here, finally wait, spot check. Hold on. I'm not I'm gonna hold off. Two minutes left. Okay, I think it's safe. Finally, we get a W after nine straight L's. That was awful. We also get a victory against the Berlin Puck Wizards. That's fantastic. That was a really, really, really rough stretch. That was awful, actually. That was terrible hockey. So let's go here. Let's sim all the way up until the games against the Tokyo Ice Tigers. And then we'll go ahead and slow sim those two guys. There you go. Another big one win. Atlanta's actually a very good team as well. And then we get destroyed 8-2. to two. Okay, 21 points. It's not ideal. And we lose 7-3. to three. Oof, this is a big oof. Uh, I don't know what the hell our team is up to here. What happened? We had 59 wins last year, and now we're 9, 12, and 5. On paper, our team looks better, but for some reason, we are just struggling huge right now. All right, so we'll go to the end of December, and I don't know if this year is going to be just a write-off. I mean, we sw I mean, we put together four or five straight wins. We're going to be back in the playoffs, but it's not looking good right now. Let's go to the end of December. Get the two games against. Uh, let's get the two games against Agency and the Tokyo Ice Tigers done with. And yeah, seven overtime losses. We are just just can't get it done in the extra frame. But but 16 losses, 12 wins. It's not looking good. But what is looking good is our all-time record against Agency and the Tokyo Ice Tigers. We are six and. Two. However, their record looks very, very nice. They're at 24, 9, and 3. And once again, we are 12, 16, and 7. Let's go. Period number one. We've owned them for this entire franchise mode, and Felix Pox continues his dominance against Agent C. I don't even know if Agent C has scored a goal against us. It's all been Felix Pox, baby. Period number two. Okay, 3 nothing. JFK. There you go. That's a guy that needs to bounce back. He has had a terrible start. Vernasty, my favorite forwards, all scoring goals. There you go. You love to see it. Jake Lecision, he scores a power play goal on Eddie Lack. Ruins the shutout. You jerk. Why would you do that? Five minutes left, and it looks like we are going to go 7-2 and two against the Ice Tigers. Okay, things might not be going our way right now. We have completely owned the Tokyo Ice Tigers. Ooh, the Montana Moon Men have fired head coach. Wow, okay, uh, what the hell? That is quite the name. Uh, but they won the cup two years ago. Why? Are they really that bad? Hold on, hold on. Let's have a look here. Montana... The Moon Men, where are they? Um, the Moon Men, they're in a playoff spot. They're 15, 18. I mean, they're not doing great, but 34 points, and you fired your head coach? Really? I mean, I know we just got our guy, but just to look, what's he looking like? Okay, so his team fit isn't really anything special, but yeah, he's got a Stanley Cup ring. Interesting. Headed into the Skyline Center, you know Agency's pulling up in his R34 GTR Nismo V-Spec 2 edition. You know he's rocking that. Pulling up to the Skyline Center, doesn't really matter. We own them right now. I don't know if I've shown you guys their jerseys or not. I'm pretty sure I have. They're bright yellow. They're kind of ugly. I don't know. I kind of went with the, with the red side thing to kind of go for their flag. I know they have that red thing. I don't know. It's, they're not beautiful, but they're okay. Kind of like the 
rising sun type deal. I don't know. I'm not an artist. Here we go, though. <laughs> Let's go. So we are 7-2, and two, looking to go 8-2. and two. I mean, things haven't been going great, but we have the Ice Tigers number. Let's keep it up. Period number one. And it's one nothing. Xavier Roulette. Where's Agent C? The guy doesn't ever show up. Period number two. Okay, there you go. Well, uh, yeah, that's just the classic X-Tech jinx. Agency gets a goal. They're up two to nothing here. I got a little bit cocky, but I mean, we're up seven to two. How can I not be cocky? Felix Pox answers right back with a goal on Chad Johnson. Hopefully we can get another one here. Oh, Marcus Kruger. Stanley Cup champion Marcus Kruger, might I add. If we get one right now, we can pull the goalie. Unfortunately, we did lose there to the Ice Tigers. Let's have a look at how things are going. So 13, 17, and 7, not ideal. The Swamp Rabbits are good for some reason. That sucks because I really thought that was going to be a good first round pick. But the pick in question might be our first round pick. We only have 30. 33 points. That's like good for second last in the entire league behind the Saskatchewan Stags. So is this year just going to be a write-off? Is year three going to be something we just flush down the toilet? Oh boy. I'm not super convinced. I think we might need to make a couple of line changes and Maybe we can uh, maybe we can get back into this here. It's still early enough. Ooh, the Vermont Devils have fired their head coach, Bernard St. Denis. Let's have a look at him. Oh, man, back to three straight losses. Three of our last four we've dropped. Uh, have a look at the other head coach that's available. Not saying we're going to hire him, but if he has like an 85% team fit, I might have to think about it. Let's have a look here. He, uh, 16 and 24, he's got a 57 team fit. See you later, Bernard. So the last time we played Berlin, we actually won, surprisingly. Something we have not done a lot against Berlin. Let's see if we can get another two points here out of Berlin. Somehow hanging on to a playoff dream, period number one. Okay, 2 nothing. Alex Fortin gets both. We started Varlamov, not good, period number two. Okay, we get one, Felix Pox, who kind of seems to be doing it all. He's kind of our only producer here. Oh, wait, Jansen Harkins, there you go go fourth line center coming through huge tying the hockey game up 11 minutes left come on do we have one more reg do we have one more goal in us before we go into overtime oh my god who why is this guy scoring goals Clem Costin there you go baby you love to see it we push an overtime frame are we going to another shootout against Berlin let's go I know I hate Berlin, but those jerseys are just pure fire. All right, Felix Pox in the shootout. Here, a couple of moves, and I don't know what that little last second leg kick was, but wasn't ideal. Here comes Bo Alfredson. Ooh, all right. Basically tries the exact same thing, and Varlamov says no. In comes Julius Honka. Captain Honka. Ooh, the poke check again. The third straight shot, the third straight poke check. Here comes Spa check. Another poke check. Make it four for four. All right, here you go, Clem Costin. You can put the pressure on here. Had a last second goal, pucks up in the air, and it's not going in the back of the net. Varlamov, I need a save here on Sammy Niku. I need a save, and we don't get it. The Berlin Puck Wizards, they continue the dominance. I mean, at least we made it interesting there with the last second goal, but another L, chalk it up to Berlin. I'm hesitant to get more simulation done, and Coach Spike Bickle, I'm concerned about our lack of scoring. Yeah, you and me too, dog. So at this point, we basically have to agree to make a trade, which I don't want to do, but might not be a bad thing. I believe after 40 games, we have a serious lack of goal production. We need to address this ASAP. Uh, you make a valid point. What are you suggesting we do? It'll basically say trade for a goal scorer. If we go with the need more time option, it will, which I'm definitely leaning towards, it might give a negative reaction. Or if we persuade him, which is risky, I'm going to go with need more time. Look, as much as I would like to address our scoring situation, I think it will resolve itself. He says, all right, I'm skeptical, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Okay, that was best case scenario. He's going to check back in two or more weeks. Let's see. Again, I'm hesitant to do more simulation, but I feel, I feel like, you know, five or six wins in a row, we can we can be right back into this thing. Uh, there's a comment that I forgot to show, but they wanted to see the Miami Unicorns, and oh baby, look at those jerseys. Whew. Yeah. Those things are a sight for sore eyes. 
Okay, let's get this entire month done here. I know we're going into February here, so if we're going to make it, this is the month to do it. Make it or break it. I need to see some wins. There's a big win against Stockholm. Let's continue it against New York. Um, you're happy I kept... I didn't do anything, brother. Uh, okay, this whole coaching thing really needs a revamp for NHL 21 because I literally pressed A twice and the coach is like, oh, you're the greatest GM ever. I didn't do a single thing. Uh, there you go. Back-to-back -back wins. Can we get another one? And then Conrad Stastny says, hell no. Uh, and then we lose three straight. Okay, 17, 22, and 9, 43 points on the year. This sucks. Up against Tyronning and the, yeah, they just own us and we've lost what? How many straight? That's one, two, three, four, five straight L's. So that was our make it or break it time. I think we can kiss this year goodbye. We have 43 points. We're a bottom team. I really, really did not expect this. Um, this kind of sucks. I mean, Vernasty and Felix Pox are doing great. They're actually doing phenomenal, but look at all the minuses. Julius Honka, he's doing good for what he has to work with. Klim Kostin, I'd like to see a bit better goal production. I mean, uh, 34 points as a first line center isn't great. Uh, JSD on the second line, Cole Lind, Jansen Harkins is doing pretty good. JFK is just struggling beyond means. He is having just a terrible year. Future Norris winners a minus 22. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Korshkov, that's a big oof as well. This whole year just might be a big oof, honestly. We might just chalk it up as, hey, let's get a good draft pick and let's move on. Chad Johnson leading the way. Um, Koltsov probably going to have a 50-goal rookie campaign at this point. He's got 38. And then Oscar Gormley, he's got 91 points. Okay, we have already have we already have three 50-goal scorers, Conrad Aguchi and Zakhanov. Oh, boy. I mean, these things kind of happen, you know? Teams aren't dominant forever. We had two really good years, couldn't get it done in the postseason. We decide to change up the coach, and maybe we just need a year to figure it all out. Maybe. And, oh, my God, there's a franchise player. So if you guys remember, I said I created some players for the draft, and there should have been some players in the last year's draft. Hell, there should be players for this year's draft. I've been hyping it up so much, I'm saying, oh, I know this draft is stacked, I know this draft is stacked, but my players are nowhere to be found. So I'm wondering if there was some sort of a glitch, or I don't know if, they, if I created them wrong, but I've never had a problem with putting players in the draft before. Maybe they're for next year? I don't know. I mean, we have a franchise player, which is pretty rare to see, and I did not create this guy. Some more style Mario Lemieux. So I'm hoping the players will be in next year's draft? I don't know, but look at all the players we got here. Jacques Briere, Shane Wright. We don't even need created players at this rate. Stuart Wall, Juha Kapanen. There's so many good players this year. Oh my god, Stuart Wall. Jesus, calm down, Chief. Uh, Shane Wright, and then Jacques Briere. He's the main squeeze. He could be like 84 out of the draft at this point. I mean, if there is a draft to get a top three pick, top four even, even top six or top seven, there's a bunch of medium elites, this would be the draft to do it. If we could draft one of these three guys, if we even win the draft lottery and get maybe Jacques Briere, oh boy, maybe this could be, uh, maybe this could be the year to tank. Never really hired and fired head coaches in my franchise mode, so I don't really know how the team reacts to it. Maybe they didn't react well because we fired them at the start of the year, and you know, like new systems, you know, learning new head coaches might screw things up. What do you guys think the problem is this year? We're fifth last in the NHL, and I mean, 43 points to 39. All these teams win a couple games, we lose a couple, and we're right back at the bottom. So. Maybe we just chalk this year up as a big L, maybe. We go and do a tiny, incy weensy rebuild and see what we can do. I don't know. Uh, really, I'm kind of at a loss for words, to be honest with you, because on paper, our team looks good, but on the ice, it's just not the way I want it to work. So I think we should just play out the year, head towards the draft, and maybe get lucky with a top three pick. Now, the nice thing is we also have an additional first-round pick. Say we got 
the fifth overall pick or something and we wanted to move up to two or three, we can use Stockholm as a trading chip as well. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Kind of a downer of an episode, but I mean, that's the life as a GM. Things go up and down. Things don't always work out like you want them to, but here we are after a 59 win season. We have 17 wins on the year headed into February. Hashtag not good. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.